In this tutorial today, I will show you my process for the antenna galaxies. Let's begin by downloading the data from the Hubble Legacy Archive. When searching for the antenna galaxies, you can search for NGC 4038, NGC 4039, or the antenna galaxies. Each one will yield the results that we are looking for. The best image that I have found has been taken by the ACS camera, or the Advanced Camera for Surveys. There are plenty of other images of the antenna galaxies, but none of them are as complete as this image set here. A quick way to download them is simply by right-clicking and choosing Open Link in New Tab. You can add them to your cart and download it that way as well, but I like this since it downloads directly and quickly. As these are downloading, make sure that you have the FITS Liberator downloaded onto your computer. This will allow us to turn these FITS files into a TIFF file. Once the files have been downloaded, open up FITS Liberator and choose the files that you would like to convert to a TIFF file. In this case, I will start with 435 or my blue file. Choose a stretch function of log of x and choose auto scaling. Then move the sliders to get to the image that you would like. The surrounding blue does not matter. When opened in Photoshop or other image processing software, it will show up as black. Save the file. In this case, I like to keep the file name with the color that I will be assigning it, just in case, like here, I have other downloads with different file names. Or rename it whatever you like. Make sure that when you are saving it, that down here where it says channels, it is in 16-bit per channel. Do the same for the other files. In this case, 550 will be green, 658 will be H alpha, and 814 will be red. Once you have the TIFF files downloaded, go to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack, and find the images that you wish to load. The images will now be separate layers that have been loaded into the stack. Because I keep long file names, I'm going to rename them to the color that I wish to assign. You can do this by double clicking on the file name. Before we begin processing, I like to edit the levels and ensure that they are as stretched as I would like them to be before I colorize them. By clicking on the eyes and clicking on the image that I wish to edit, I only see that image in the editor. Then go to Image, Adjustments, and Levels. These levels have not been stretched too much, so there's not a lot that I need to do to the image. However, some images do end up very stretched. Next, convert each layer to a smart object. This can be done by right-clicking on the layer and choosing Convert to Smart Object. In order to colorize these images, they must be changed to RGB color mode. 
do this in image, mode, and select RGB color. Choose don't merge and choose don't rasterize. The images can be colorized in one of two ways. A quick way is simply by double clicking on the layer itself and under advanced blending, simply choosing blue by unchecking green and red. Or I like to use the hue and saturation colorization method. This is under layer, new adjustment layer, hue and saturation, check to use the previous layer to create a clipping mask and select colorize. This gives me more control over the exact hue that I will be using to colorize this image. Two forty is a good shade for blue. Make sure that saturation is at a hundred and lightness is at negative fifty. However, you can adjust these to any color, brightness, or saturation that you would like that works best for your image. In order to see the layer that you are working with, you can unselect the eye to see how it looks when it is colorized. I'm going to delete my H alpha channel because I actually want to add that one in later. Selecting all the eyes in order to see all the layers, I select the blue layer. Then for normal blending, I switch it to lighten. I do the same for the green, but I leave the bottom layer, which is red, alone. It does not matter whatever color is on the bottom. The bottom layer can remain at normal. Now I have a fully colorized image of the antenna galaxies. I'm going to flatten the image. And from here, the image can be processed like a normal image. Before I process, I will first add my hydrogen alpha luminosity layer. I'm going to create a new layer, then go to File, Open, and open my H alpha. In this case, that is filter 658. I'm going to once again adjust the levels. They do not need too much adjusting. And I'm going to use Control A and Control C to select and copy the layer. I'm going to then use Control V and paste it on top of the layer. Layer 1 is just a placeholder to get it to not paste straight onto the background and can be deleted. I'm going to rename the layer to H alpha and for quick colorization, just use the layer colorization method by unselecting green and blue and choosing red. Photoshop will automatically blend the layers, otherwise you can select lighten. You can also select luminosity, gives it a bit of a more intense color. Choose whatever blending method you think looks the best. In this case, I think I like the luminosity, so I will stick with it. The image is now ready for further processing. Before I begin, I will crop the image from this black background. By going to the Crop tool and right-clicking, I can choose Perspective Crop tool, which will allow me to cut out this area of the image that I would like to use. By moving the four corners of the Crop tool, I can select the area that I want. Simply right-click and choose Crop in order to crop it. Because this image has a green tint to it, before I begin processing, I will then use the Hosta La Vista plugin from Deep Sky Colors in order to remove that green. Once the green is gone, I would create a new layer and select my black threshold point. I will then check the levels 
to see how stretched they are. They're not very stretched in this case, but I like to even them out before I begin processing. Next, I will create a new layer and adjust my colors using layer, new adjustment layer, and selective color adjustment. This allows me to change the colors in the image to enhance or subtract various colors. In the case of the blue starburst region here, I can remove the cyan and make it more white, or I can add more and make it a darker blue. This can be done for any of these colors on this list, and this is all done to your taste. After that is completed, I usually like to use the camera raw filter to enhance the details in this image. By going to filter, camera raw filter, it gives a setup very similar to Lightroom and allows me to enhance details in the image. Things such as the temperature, whether it's a bluer or a more yellow orange picture, exposure, contrast, highlights, texture, clarity, dehazing the image, all can affect how your final image will come out. So feel free to mess around with the choices in here and figure out what makes your image look the best. Hubble images are not often that noisy, although older images do have a lot of color noise or just noise in general. This can be removed using filter, noise, and by choosing different noise removal options. However, this image does not have a lot of noise and I am happy not to try and remove any of that noise. Those are my main steps when processing the antenna galaxies.